a mutated spider terrorizing the residents of an apartment building in the Ukraine, nuclear radiation that spawned a three-headed frog, and an ominous blackbird that seemed to signal the worst nuclear disaster in history. These are mutated animals found after nuclear fallout. So we've all heard of the wild stories about mutated animals in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, but there's one story from the Ukraine about a mutated spider that you likely haven't heard of. The story goes that two residents of an apartment in the Ukraine were found in the elevator, having suffered extreme BLOOD loss. But the elevator was completely clean, aside from the dead bodies, of course, who both had puncture wounds on their necks. It was as if their bodily fluids had been sucked right out of them. Rumors started to spread in the building that a vampire was lurking around, and some residents were so scared they refused to use the elevator at all. Then two detectives decided to look into it. On the third day of their investigation, they hopped into the elevator, which suddenly stopped between the fifth and sixth floors. Now, at first, they weren't too worried, since the elevator was known to be pretty janky, but then they heard a weird clicking noise from above them. They pulled off a roof panel and shone their flashlights up, only to see a foot-long black shape scuttling toward them. Suddenly, it lunged at one of the detectives. His partner fired at it, but it was too late. His partner was dead. When backup arrived, they found the surviving detective in a corner, terrified with his dead partner and a massive mutated spider in front of him. When the police checked the elevator shaft, they discovered the thing had laid eggs. They burned them all with flamethrowers. People believe these monstrous spiders were a result of radiation from the Chernobyl disaster, which somehow mutated them into these deadly creatures. At least, so the story goes. Now, we hear about animals with extra limbs or even two-headed animal mutations sometimes, but three-headed mutations? Can't say I've ever heard that one before. And this one is absolutely real. No urban legend status to this. So, in 2004, a three-headed frog was found in the Garden of Green Umbrella Nursery in the UK, and it may have been the result of nuclear radiation. A student who had just been dropped off at the nursery found it. At first, the staff thought it was just three frogs snuggled together, but then they looked closer and realized it was actually one frog, not just with uh, three heads, but it also had six legs. The staff placed it in a tank, but by the next morning, it had somehow escaped. Although I guess if you have three brains, you're probably better at figuring things out. A biology professor at the Open University called this mutation, quote, completely unheard of. He figured the mutation could be linked to parasites or pollution. There was a decommissioned nuclear power station nearby, so it's possible the frog was mutated by radiation. Moving back into the realm of urban legend for a moment, though, let me tell you a story of the Blackbird. In early April 1986, people living near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant started reporting a strange and terrifying creature, a large mutated bird with giant wings and bright red eyes. This creature, dubbed the Blackbird of Chernobyl, seemed to be connected to a series of eerie events. People started seeing the bird in their dreams, and sightings of the creature seemed to increase as the days passed, building up to the early hours of April 26th, 1986, where at 1.23 a.m., Reactor 4 of the Chernobyl plant exploded, followed by a fire and nuclear meltdown. The disaster released radioactive fallout, leading to the evacuation of over 336,000 people. After the explosion, Soviet helicopters were sent to fight the fires at the plant, and some of the firefighters who survived the initial blast later claimed to have seen an ominous creature gliding through the air, one that looked a lot like the one people had been reporting, a massive creature with a 20-foot wingspan flying through the radioactive smoke. After the disaster, though, sightings of the Blackbird of Chernobyl stopped, and it left people wondering whether the creature was some sort of bad omen. Some also believe the Blackbird of Chernobyl could have been the same creature reported in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, before the collapse of the Silver Bridge in 1968. Mothman. Speaking of Mothman, this creature is usually thought of as some sort of radioactive abomination. Reports of a strange winged creature began appearing in Point Pleasant, West Virginia in the 60s, culminating in the collapse of the Silver Bridge in December of 1968. Witnesses described the creature as having large wings, glowing red eyes, but with a human-like body shape. It became known as the Mothman. And much like the Blackbird of Chernobyl, some believe it appeared as a harbinger of doom. In the days leading up to the disaster, people reported seeing the Mothman flying near the bridge. But as soon as the Silver Bridge collapsed, killing 46 people, the Mothman sightings immediately stopped. 
Sound familiar? Over the years, people have wondered what this creature was, or if it really existed at all, of course. Was it just a misidentified animal? Could it have been a mutated creature of some kind? Or was it really some sort of paranormal being that shows up before major disasters, warning people of what's to come? A new attack atoll is a group of islands in the Western Pacific where the US did 43 nuclear tests between 1948 and 1958, including the first hydrogen bomb test. All that testing left the lagoon, soil, and everything around it radioactive. In 1972, the US spent $100 million to clean up the mess. They mixed 80,000 cubic meters of contaminated soil with cement and filled it into a giant crater, then covered it with a huge concrete dome. But even after all that, the damage didn't just disappear. Turtles living in the area were found with radiation in their shells. During the cleanup, radioactive sediment from the lagoon got stirred up and the turtles ended up swallowing it, which left them permanently affected by all that fallout. Yes, we had real life radioactive turtles. That'd be a fun Ninja Turtles knockoff, Teenage Mutant surfing Ninja Turtles because they're sea turtles. After the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, radioactive fallout, of course, spread pretty far and wide, affecting animals across Europe. Wild boars in Bavaria, Germany were one of the most heavily affected species. And the reason? Boars love to forage on mushrooms and truffles, and these fungi, which grow in the soil, can absorb radiation from the ground. Turns out that after Chernobyl, mushrooms in the area absorbed a lot of the radiation that fell from the sky. Wild boars in Bavaria were found to have 15,000 becquerels of radiation per kilogram of meat. The European safety limit is just 600 but crails, so yeah, uh, way over the limit. Meanwhile, in Norway, the fallout from Chernobyl affected reindeer. The radioactive elements settled in the soil and were absorbed by moss and fungi, which reindeer loved to eat. And after the fallout, reindeer were found to have radiation levels of over 100,000 becquerels per kilogram, way higher than what's safe. Though the radiation in reindeer meat has decreased over time, sometimes levels still spike, going above 2,000, still enough to cause concern for those who eat reindeer meat. After the Fukushima disaster in 2011, macaque monkeys living near the plant were found to have dangerously high levels of radiation in their bodies. The earthquake and tsunami triggered a meltdown at the Fukushima nuclear plant, releasing radioactive cesium into the environment. Macaque's diet, which includes mushrooms, tree bark, and bamboo, likely contributed to this exposure. Again, these plants absorb radiation from the soil, and as the monkeys ate them, the radiation accumulated in their bodies. In fact, the macaques were found to have up to 13,500 becquerels of cesium per kilogram. Scientists believe the radiation might have also caused some disturbing effects on the monkeys as well, like smaller heads, smaller brains, delayed growth in general, and even anemia. After the Chernobyl disaster, nature took over in a big way. The area around the reactor, especially the ghost town of Pripyat, has seen this massive explosion of plant life, with humans gone, for the most part anyway. Trees, vines, and bushes have crept over everything, turning the place into this sort of urban jungle. It's actually pretty amazing how quickly nature rebounded. This regrowth has created new habitats for all sorts of animals, and the area is now home to all these thriving animal populations. But it's not all good news. Some scientists notice that certain parts of the forests aren't decomposing as they should. Leaves in areas with higher radiation levels didn't break down properly. In an experiment, leaves from cleaner areas were left in spots with more radiation, and after nearly a year, those leaves had only decomposed about 40%. Instead of breaking down, they just stayed dry and intact. That might not seem like a big deal, but when dry leaves pile up in a place that could be prone to a forest fire, that's a bit of a hazard risk. If a fire were to break out, it could also spread radioactive material well beyond the exclusion zone. Back in 2014, something pretty wild happened on a farm in northeast Croatia. Zoran Paparik's goat, Sarka, gave birth to a kid with eight legs, along with two healthy goats. Sarka had this extra-legged baby, which also had both male and female reproductive organs. Local vets said it was likely because of an underdeveloped twin sibling that didn't fully form. When Zoran first saw the goat, he couldn't believe his eyes, saying, I counted his legs and I thought I was seeing things. 
and I called my neighbor to make sure that I wasn't crazy. People started calling it the Octo Goat. Zorn hoped the little guy would survive, and even though vets weren't too optimistic, they said it probably wouldn't make it, but if it did, it could live a couple of years. I don't know what's happened to this goat now, but yeah, pretty nuts. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I will catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.